tragedy, harassment, 4chan. Do we even know who is this 4chan? Today we'll look at the story of Anne Hero, one of the events that launched the online image board into infamy at the expense of a grieving family. And to this very day, it lives on as one of the most disturbing moments in internet history, even if most have forgotten about it. Mitchell James Henderson was born on July 15, 1992, in the city of Rochester, Minnesota. He was raised alongside his sister as a Christian, and joining the church's youth group. In middle school, he took part in several sports and extracurricular activities. By all accounts, Mitchell seemed no different than the average 13-year-old boy. So it came as a complete shock when on one spring afternoon, he tragically took his own life. The exact day was April 20th, 2006, when Mitchell snuck into his parents' bedroom to retrieve the 22 caliber rifle inside their closet. It was then that he pointed the firearm towards his head and pulled the trigger. The injury was fatal, and within three hours, the middle schooler was pronounced dead. To this day, it's unclear what led the boy to end his life. Thus, the already horrific event became even more difficult to cope with. Mitchell's suicide paralyzed not just his loved ones, but the entire community. The next day, a school assembly was held to mourn his death, as peers created a virtual memorial on MySpace. It was quickly filled with eulogies honoring their former classmates. They reminisced of his great sense of humor, recalling him as an amazing son, brother, and friend. For many, it was their first confrontation with death, which made the grieving process even more confusing. This difficulty led to messages with somewhat bizarre implications. In particular was one left by Lila, which almost seems to praise Mitchell for taking his own life. It reads as follows. He was such an hero to take it all away. We miss him so that you should know, and we honor him this day. He was an hero to take that shot to leave us all behind. He had courage, that boy did, courage in his heart, to take that shot to end his pain to tear us all apart. But in the end, he died in courage, lacking nevermore. He died an hero, Mitchell did, and will love him forevermore. We love you like an brother. We miss you so much. We will always love you, kid. Rest in peace, Mitch. In the weeks that followed, Mitchell's parents started a fund to cover the funeral and the memorial service which was held on the 25th. But with so many people in attendance, the building was at full capacity. He was buried at the Congregational Church Columbarium in the very city he was born. Though still difficult, it now seemed possible for both his loved ones and the community at large to move on. And in most scenarios, they would have been able to. But this changed when, a month later, the internet took notice of the story. We'll find out more about this horrific response after a word from our sponsor. In the country of Scotland, there is a custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. While in the past only a small group were able to refer to themselves with these titles, that is no longer the case with today's sponsor, Established Titles. This company is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global restoration efforts. If you go to their website, you'll be able to purchase a small portion of land on their private estate in Idleston, Scotland. And when you do this, you'll Will now officially be a lord or lady. You can also get a certificate sent to your house that features a unique plot number with which you could see the exact location of your land. They do this by working with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global restoration efforts. With the holiday season coming up, this makes a great last minute gift. And they even offer a couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. And if you're one of the first 200 people purchasing a title pack, using my link, you will effectively be next to my plot. Plus, if you use code GFM at checkout, you will get an additional 10% off your order. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash GFM to get your gifts now and help support the channel. And the link will also be in the description down below. In a time before the internet, the sad fate of Mitchell Henderson would have faded. But unfortunately, that was not the case for this tragedy in 2006, due to a series of online events that no one could have seen coming. 
It all started on MyDeathSpace.com, a website intent on documenting social media users who passed away. It connects the deceased profile to their obituary. That May, the site published a newspaper clipping regarding Mitchell's suicide. It then linked to the account set up by classmates. This led his memorial to receive massive amounts of attention. In the site's discussion forum, many were in shock at the lad's young age. The first post remarks, Shouldn't he be watching Pokemon and growing pubes? What the hell is wrong with this country when a 13-year-old boy gets a gun and feels there is nothing to live for? But others weren't disturbed. In fact, they instead were viewing it as an opportunity for cheap laughs. That was especially true on 4chan, an anonymous image board. The site is notorious for hosting depraved content and allowing users to espouse whatever they please, such as their raid on Habbo Hotel just weeks prior. In June of 2006, Mitch's memorial was posted to the site's random board. It immediately became subject to targeted harassment, as trolls instigated the grieving middle schoolers. They created accounts mocking Mitchell, using Photoshop to edit his likeness. This included a zombified version, as well as altering his face to resemble various ethnic stereotypes. The profiles were then used to hurl insults as well as post inappropriate material. The ransackers then discovered Lila's eulogy. In addition to its implications, posters fixated on her repetition of the phrase, an hero. They adopted the term as shorthand for suicide. This usage became so popular, it went on to become a site-wide trend, with many still referencing it to this very day. As the raid ensued, trolls were confronted with the same question Mitchell's loved ones had grappled with for weeks. Why? They took on a variety of theories, like the baseless claim that his father abused him. But the turning point was their discovery of a post mentioning that Mitch had lost his iPod. This inconsequential detail was turned into the sole reason he took his own life. It became a meme, spawning even more edits and mockery. In disturbing images, Henderson's face was now plastered onto animations of dancing and spinning iPods. A dramatic reenactment was also created depicting him shattering the device. By this point, the narrative that the young man took his own life over an electronic device was prevalent enough that many took it at face value. And the idea of such a selfish act angered them, emboldening more extreme measures. When the user found the funeral, its guestbook was flooded with variations of an hero. They then deployed a script to create pop-ups reciting lyrics from the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. By August, the MySpace profile was fully hacked and vandalized with demonic edits of his face. But it gets worse, the harassment extended to real life, with the family's personal information spread online. This began the voicemails the parents started to receive mocking their deceased to child. Uh, yeah, this is Mitch. Can you pick me up by the, uh, cemetery? I'm kinda dead. Oh, yeah, where's my iPod at? Other callers imitated their son's ghost and claimed to have found his device. But by far the most disturbing was the person who visited Mitchell's actual gravesite. This individual placed an iPod on the boy's headstone, snapped a pic, and posted it on 4chan. These acts would all be proudly documented on Encyclopedia Dramatica, a satirical wiki run by trolls. Mitchell, as well as the phrase and hero, received their own pages as the harassment continued for years. The site created several events surrounding the meme, like An Hero Day. It pointed out that he died on the same day as Adolf Hitler's birthday. They also established the Golden iPod Awards, which honored the most entertaining suicide of the year. The first was dedicated to Mitchell Henderson himself, with the official explanation reading, for becoming the first person to receive the An Hero title and for bringing many lulls to the internet. Mitchell showed us that death does not have to be sad, but could in fact be quite hilarious. For losing his iPod and creating a new classic meme in the process, Mitchell Henderson lives on in our hearts and in our hard drives, and receives the inaugural Golden iPod Award of 2006. 
1946. This harassment continued for years. The ED page was constantly amended with hate mail they received, including an attempt from someone who attended his funeral to vandalize the page. She pleaded for the trolls to stop making fun of Mitchell like he's some sport. Instead, they continuously invoked his name in their subsequent pranks. On September 3rd, 2007, a supposed text from Mitch was read on BBC Radio 1 Sunday Surgery. Some great texts coming in. Thank you so much for texting in. We've got a great text from Mitch Henderson. Just texting to say, when I started school, I got bullied. I got my shoes taken off me and put on my head. I lost my iPod and wanted to kill myself. Then I stood up to the bully and now I'm a hero. Mitch is 13 years old. Mitch, go on, my son. Well done. Well done indeed. Months later, Fox 11 News also received one of these fake messages. In an email, Mitch asked for advice on how not to lose his iPod. It was read aloud over the airwaves, with the presenters responding confused. A recording of the incident once appeared on YouTube, but it's since been removed and no archives exist, making it lost media. Throughout all of this, the Henderson family stayed completely silent. It's understandable given that any reaction would have only fueled the harassment. To date, they've only ever made one public comment on the situation. On August 3rd, 2008, the New York Times published an article profiling internet trolls. It begins with Mitchell's story and contains a statement from his father. The phone began ringing at Mitchell's parents' home. It sounded like kids remembers Mitchell's father, Mark Henderson, a 44-year-old IT executive. He sighed. It really got to my wife. The calls continued for a year and a half. In response, the quote was embedded on Encyclopedia Dramatica with the AS switched to an S. The attribution reads, The NY Times quoting someone who never thought to change his phone number. As mentioned before, the phrase and hero is still used to this very day. But thankfully, the direct harassment of the Henderson family eventually subsided. While most stories about the darker side of the internet have a bright spot or two, that doesn't exist here. The entire basis for mocking the boy's death was a fabrication created by trolls themselves. Yet in spite of the disturbing nature of the tale, there's been surprisingly little support or acknowledgement of the family's suffering. So there you have the story of one of the most disturbing things 4chan ever did. And next time you hear someone using the term man hero, you'll know the origin. So until next time, thanks for watching.